Alright, good evening. Hi, everyone. Is doing well tonight. Sorry, I had to talk to uh, various people. Um, so let's see. Um, can't see myself. Um, like dwindling numbers. Come to class. Yeah. All right. You know, people are sick and uh, things like that. So we are sorry if you are at home sick. We're sorry if you are at home because your parents are sick um, and whatever else might be the case. So uh, we're sorry that you're at home, but uh, hopefully we'll have everybody back again soon. Um, people have not been doing their lessons when they miss and showing them to me. If you have done them, I need to see them. Uh, caveat is I'm not seeing them right now. so. Um, yeah, we're supposed to do that like week by week and you're supposed to keep up with these things and show me the lessons that you have missed. Um, so there's quite a few, quite a few absences and so quite a few people need to show me what they have missed. So this is lesson 18, lesson 17, alright. Um, so please attend to that. If you're watching online tonight, I'd like to see your lesson next week when you're in class. Um, so, lesson 18. Oh, and the papers, I, I email the papers. If you uh, don't have a way to print at home and you need a copy, then you need to, I don't know, email me and we can have a copy ready for you on Sunday. We can put it in your mailbox. So, um, but, um, Otherwise, the uh, lesson got emailed today, and you're probably watching this um, sometime after today. So we're on lesson 18, um, Baptism, Part B. And last week we talked, um, uh, we started Baptism, obviously, Part A. And uh, what is our, uh, what's our need as people? So don't uh, look back to review. Let's just talk about uh, some of the stuff we talked about last week um, to remind us uh, what is our what's our problem before God? How did the Bible describe us? There were three things that the Bible describes us as. Unclean. Mm, well, that is true. We are unclean. We are unclean. That is absolutely true. Colton. Enemy to God. We are enemies of God. We're born as enemies of God according to our sinful nature. We're also born blind to the spiritual things of God, right? So um, uh, we can't understand the things of the Spirit according to our sinful nature. And, and then we are also born. What's the really, really, really a big problem? You are all what in your sin? Mm -hmm. You are all <laughs> sinful in your sin. That's exactly right, Sydney. You are all sinful in your sin. That's that's good. But you are all also something else in your sin. What? Dead in your sin. You are all dead in your sin. And so we talked about... Um, talked about that and then said, but God in His mercy does what? God in His mercy does what? Forgives us. For, well, yeah, hmm, okay. How? Why? Through the means of grace. Yeah, well, okay. I was looking for something a little less specific, I suppose. Um, through Jesus and His death and resurrection, right? Jesus' death and resurrection. And, and then that forgiveness that He wins for us is brought to us in the Means of grace, very good, Leo. All right, and uh, the means of grace. What? Uh, what are the means of grace? Harrison, yeah. baptism. Another one is he? Uh, the Lord's supper. The Lord's supper, and Sydney. Um, the word and and. And, and, Peter? Absolution. Absolution, holy absolution. That's right. 
Um, all right. So then we talked about we talked about some just uh, beginning things about uh, baptism, but um, uh, we called baptism then a sacrament. Do you remember what a sacrament is? It's got like a four part definition. Do you remember what a sacrament is? It is a it is a gift from God. You're exactly right, but totally wrong. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, I mean, it's good to be right. If you're going to be wrong, you might as well be right, right? Wrong. Wrong. No. No, actually not wrong. Right. If you're going to be wrong, you might as well be right. So, I mean, you said something right, but it was wrong. It's not the answer I want. Are you thoroughly confused? Uh, yeah. All right, so um, it is a sacred act. So a sacrament is a sacred act. And then there's three more parts to it. Wouldn't that become the visible element? It has a, uh, uh, what is attached to the visible element? The water? Word? God's word of promise is attached to a visible element. All right, that's one part. What else? A sacrament is also something that is. I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say something else. Instituted by Christ. It is instituted by Christ. So that's actually the first part, right? So it's a sacred act instituted by Christ in which he connects his word of promise to a visible element like name a visible element. Water. Water. Is stone. What? <laughs> Here, I've always thought that you were a better student than Ashley. No, I'm kidding. <coughs> Everybody's a better student than Ashley. <coughs> oh, wait. No, I didn't mean that either. I did not mean that either. You're going to like show her, aren't you? That would be terrible. Um, please, I'm so sorry, Ashley. Um, so, so the Bible is not a visible element because the Bible is not a, a sacrament, right? The Bible is a means of grace, but not a sacrament, right? So, um, a sacrament would be, what are the two sacraments? <laughs> Baptism. You know, 8th graders, it's going to be really hard to confirm you. <laughs> Baptism and Holy Communion. Holy Communion, Lord's Supper, right? Those are the two sacraments. So what are the visible signs that are surrounding Baptism and Lord's Supper? Bread, bread wine, wine, water. water. Alright, very good. Alright, we got that. Bread, wine, water. Alright, visible elements in the sacraments of Holy Baptism and the Lord's Supper. Alright, so... Uh, a sacrament then, baptism, Lord's Supper, it's a sacred act instituted by Christ in which he, uh, in which he uh, um, word, connects his word, I couldn't think of the word, connects his word of promise to a visible element and in which he does what? What's the whole purpose of the sacrament? Offers, gives, and seals forgiveness of sins. All right, offers, gives, and seals forgiveness of sins. So, that's what a sacrament is. All right, so, uh, lesson 18 then, lesson 18, why, uh, so we want to talk about infant baptism. Infant baptism is, uh, uh, so we're going to talk about infant baptism, and then we're going to talk about the benefits of baptism. All right, so infant baptism, why do we baptize babies? Because not all Christians, not all Christian churches baptize babies. All right. Do you know a Christian church that does not baptize babies? Methodists. Um, Methodists typically do. Methodists typically do. They don't have a complete understanding of what's going on, but they do have a kind of a partial understanding of what's going on. And so they do baptize babies. Non-denominational non -denominational churches do not baptize babies. Um, and non-denominational churches are basically baptized, Baptist churches without being part of the Baptist church. So most, if you, uh, if you like, uh, looked at non-denominational churches, 
most pastors who are part of non-denominational churches all went to Baptist seminaries. Not all of them, but an awful lot of them go to Baptist seminaries. And so they graduate the seminary, they become pastors in non-denominational churches, but basically their theology is Baptist theology. And so Baptists are, the, are one of the big denominations that do not baptize infants. Um, and then you have like Nazarenes, Church of God, Church of Christ, uh, Pentecostal churches. Um, so there's a whole, several denominations that don't baptize babies. Um, so why, why do we baptize, why do we baptize babies? Do you have any clue at all why does the Lutheran church baptize infants? Alexis? You want them to, the Holy Spirit to marry their wives? All right, we want the Holy Spirit to work what in their lives? Forgiveness, faith, faith right? The Christian F words. We want the Holy Spirit to work forgiveness, faith, life, salvation in their lives, right? And um, there's really nothing in the Bible, there's nothing in Scripture that says that the Holy Spirit can't do that in a baby. Now, sometimes people say, well, that doesn't make any sense. The Holy Spirit can't do that in a baby. A baby can't. A baby can't believe. A baby can't. A baby doesn't sin. Right? A baby doesn't sin. A baby can't believe. Does the Bible ever say that a baby can't believe? Nope. In fact, it says the opposite. Actually, clear word of Scripture says that uh, young, 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 young children can have faith in Jesus. Um, does the Bible ever say that, uh, what else did I say? I said baby can't believe, baby can't. Sin, sin. Sin. Oh, is there anything in the Bible that says a baby doesn't sin? Nope. nope. In fact, the Bible says just the opposite because it says all people have yeah. sin to fall short of the glory of God. Are babies people? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so really it's against the clear word of Scripture there too, right? So Alexis, very good answer, right? We baptize babies because we want the Holy Spirit to work forgiveness, life, salvation, faith in the lives of these babies. Absolutely. That's exactly correct. And then, and then there's reasons then that people look at that and say, Alexis, you're an idiot. Um, I mean, I, I would never say that, right? Don't get me wrong here. Um, but, but people would look at you and just say, what, what are you talking about? The Holy Spirit can't do that. Holy Spirit can't do that because babies can't believe, because babies don't sin, because, what, because, because, because whatever, right? And, and that doesn't make any sense to them. But we have the clear word of Scripture that really says otherwise. Now, what's really important is you don't have to go to school and argue with your Baptist friends about baptizing infants, right? Um, this is just something that you should know, you should understand, so that if a friend asks you, you can tell them, right? You can tell them, and you can understand the reasons that we don't, we don't uh, look at this topic and go, well, well, babies don't need, babies can't, God doesn't, God wouldn't, right? We don't need to do any of that. We can just say, here's what Scripture says, and, and show me how Scripture says anything differently. All right, now, with that said, I had a, we have a member whose husband is, uh, belongs to a Nazarene church. And uh, she wanted to have their baby, first baby baptized. And um, so they came and met with me in the office. And um, she got her way. Both of their kids have been baptized, which is um, kind of funny to me. But uh, all he wanted to do is argue with me. And I simply was like, well, this is what Scripture says. And, and everything he said was, but that's not what that means. Or, but, but that, but that, but that, but that. Everything was just an argument. And I was like, well, what does it mean, right? And then he would come up with a meaning that was obviously not accurate, right? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yeah, but, but babies are innocent of that sin. Uh, show me in the Bible. Well, he couldn't show me in the Bible, but he wanted to argue that babies are innocent of sin. It's like, come on, right? I did, but I didn't argue with him. Right? You, don't, you don't argue with you don't argue with people. You you simply. Um, I think the best thing to do is you ask questions, and you tell them what Scripture says, right? So so I asked him questions, and and I told him what Scripture said. So when he said, "Well, babies aren't culpable for that sin. They're not. They're they're innocent of that sin." I was like, "Well, show show me where." Well, well, they just are, because 
obviously they don't know what they're doing, so so they don't know that it's sin. And I was like, dude, this just doesn't make any sense. But but it's what uh, a lot of Christian denominations teach, and and the people in those Christian denominations just kind of go along with it without really understanding that there's a there's an issue with the clear word of God, right? So um, let's take a look um, how I have this set up. Question one, two, seven, and four. Um, one, two, uh, yeah, should be three and four. Um, I have, uh, well, one, two, and three are all kind of arguments that people use to say, hey, we shouldn't baptize babies, right? So these are kind of the arguments that you might hear a friend say or, or something like that. And so you should just kind of know, you should know what the scriptures say about it ultimately um, so that you can give answer to it. So <coughs> um, let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, we've got, uh, I don't know, six, uh, 11 Bible passages. Let's um, let's go around the room and uh, pick these up. So one A, one B, one C, two A, two B, two C, two D, two E, three A, three B, three C. And Leo will read everything else. So the first paragraph, why baptize bait, or why infant baptism, right? Christ words all nations, right? Remember, we read that passage last week from Matthew 28. Um, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And how do you make disciples? By baptizing and teaching them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. By baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and teaching them. Um, and so uh, all nations means more than every country. It means... That he, his desire is for every person, man, woman, and child, to be baptized. Many Christians disagree with infant baptism. Read the Bible verses indicated in order to react to the misconceptions surrounding infant baptism. So, um, God never tells us to baptize infants. Matthew 28, 19. That's the easy one. Go therefore make a sense of all nations baptizing them in the name of the all right, and based on that scripture passage, what would we say? So God doesn't say to baptize babies, and you hear that word, go and make disciples of all nations. What would you, how would you answer somebody? Well, the Bible doesn't tell us to baptize babies. Cora? No. Well, we're all his disciples because we've been baptized and taught, right? But what does it say about... What does it say about infant baptism? So God never tells us to baptize infants, but Walter just said, Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing. Uh, to baptize all nations, like everyone, including infants. Uh, aren't babies part of all nations? Are they not part of all peoples? Right? It's not like, it's not like, uh, 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 a newborn isn't part of your people group, right? Your nation. Um, they, they are part of all peoples, right? So, so uh, what would I say? Um, babies are included in all nations or something like that, right? I mean, um, so when somebody says, well, the Bible never tells us to baptize babies. You are absolutely correct. The Bible never says, never says, quote, baptize babies and kids and adults. The Bible never says it like that. But the Bible does say baptize all nations. How are babies not part of all nations? That's what I would ask somebody. That's what I did ask him. And he, I don't know, had reasons, had reasons not to, but... Um, you really don't have a reason, right? Babies are part of all nations. So Acts 2, 38 to 39. Oh, this is uh this is on Pentecost, and uh 
uh, you know, the Holy Spirit comes on the disciples and they have the flames of fire and they start speaking in other languages. And the people come and Peter preaches a sermon and basically in the sermon convicts them of their sin and says, it's, it, it's you who put Jesus on the cross. You put Jesus on the cross. And, and the people hear the law and they're cut to the heart and they say, what must we do to be saved? And Peter answers, Repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. You'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all who the Lord our God will call. All right, so repent and be baptized, every one of you, will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, or for the forgiveness of sins, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise of, of what? When he says the promise is for you and your children, the promise of yeah. baptism. Right? The referent in Greek goes back to baptism. The promise of baptism is for you and your children. And what was the promise of baptism? Okay. Forgiveness and okay. Holy Spirit. Forgiveness and Holy Spirit. Now, you're right, Harrison, right? This is, again, you're right, but you're wrong. Um, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> All of those other things, too. We'll talk about the benefits of baptism, right? Because there's lots of benefits of baptism. But here in Acts 2, it was um, forgiveness and Holy Spirit. So those promises of baptism are for you and your children. Does it say what age children? No. Because a, a Nazarene person or a Baptist person would say, well, that age is like 12 and older. And, and my response would be, show me where the Bible says that. That's all you have to do, right? You don't have to argue. You don't have to argue with people. Show me where God's Word says that. Where does God's Word say that children are 12 years and older? So the promise of baptism is for you and your children... And that word children there means actually in Greek it means from the littlest of children on up. So the littlest children. So technically and, and very specifically the, the scripture says the promise of baptism is for you and the littlest children among you all the way to the oldest children. That's what it says. So what's our answer there? The promise of baptism is for uh, all children and adults, right? Parentheses and adults. Right? The promise of baptism is for all children. All right. Acts 16, 29 to 34. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in. All right, this is the story where Paul and is at Silas are in prison, and uh, uh, they're singing hymns through the night. And then there's an earthquake, and and um, all of the jail cells are open, and the jailer is going to uh, kill himself because he thinks he thinks all the prisoners have escaped, and if all the prisoners are escaped, I mean he's going to die. Um, by somebody's hand, right? So he's ready to kill himself. And so, okay, read. This is the... The jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he thought... Oh, out yeah, Paul says, hey, 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 don't harm yourself. Yeah, that's like verse 27 or 28. All right, jailer runs in with lights. And trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized as one at once, he and all of his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along all right, the good. entire house. Um, so, uh, so who was baptized? Him and his family. His family. The guy and his family. Now, so, uh, so my arguer dude... Um, didn't really care about this passage because what do you think he said? How do you know if his family's... How do you know there were any babies there? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, well, how do you know there weren't? 
right? I mean, so it is sort of an argument by silent, silent, from silence, but we know, based on this text, and based on what the Christian church did very early on, because we, have actually, we actually have records, we actually have records, and we know from very early on, when people came to faith, the whole family got baptized. Now, why didn't you get baptized with your whole family? Because they've already, your parents have already been. Because they've already come to faith, right? They are already baptized, maybe as infants, right? They've been in the faith. But in the early Christian church, very often, an entire family was brought to faith at the same time. Right? Now that happens occasionally now, um, probably in, in certain places of the world even more than in America, right? But uh, like I, uh, I baptized a mom and her two kids over at Redeemer while I was doing the vacancy. Um, the dad had been baptized, you know, early on in life. But um, I baptized the mom and the two kids, so it's kind of the same thing, right? Um, it was uh, mom said, mom and dad said the faith is important. We need to be people of faith, and so this is what we're going to do. We, we believe, and so we're going to get baptized. Now, they weren't babies, right? They were older, a little bit older kids. They were little little kids, but um, uh, so not babies, but... But it's, it was the practice of the church, right? So, not maybe a great argument because it doesn't specifically say infants, right? It doesn't say that the jailer had any babies in the family. Um, but we know from practice that um, it, was, it was very common for whole families to be uh, baptized. And, and this probably would have included all of their servants also. Any servants in the household would have been baptized. Everybody, the whole household, grandmas and grandpas, anybody living in this household was baptized that night um, by Paul and Silas. All right, Alexis. Uh, it's kind of like the background of when this time was, but it was during uh, Paul's second mission, missionary journey, and it was when he was um, converting Jews. And they started to split. And so I could tell people, all the tough families that. Oh, absolutely. And not only Jews, not only Jews converting, but also Gentile families. So this jailer would have been a Gentile, even, right? This would have been a uh, Greek guy, um, and his family would have been Gentiles. But yeah, absolutely. Re whether it was Jew or Gentile, right? It, it was just very common that whole households were baptized at the same time. And it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous to dig in your heels and say no babies were baptized. Just like, yeah, you don't have a grip on reality. <clears throat> now again, I'm not going to I'm not going to make fun of other Christians that I'm talking to about baptism, right? It, it's just it's the truth, right? You don't you don't have a grip on reality and, and really what's going on, like God's word says, because you're using your human reason to get in the way of the clear Word of God. That's what we don't do. We don't use human reason to get in the way of the clear Word of God. And the clear Word of God says that families were baptized. It says that uh, uh, all nations should be baptized. It says the promise is for you and the littlest children among you. Um, so what this guy told me, what this guy told me, who doesn't know the Greek language at all, he said, well, this promise is for you and your children, meaning the promise of forgiveness. Nope. The promise of baptism is for you and your children. Right? Um, and so, uh, yeah, we don't want human reason to stand in the way. So what's our answer there for 1C? Um, whole households were baptized. Whole households were baptized, which had to have included children. Whole households were baptized, had to have included children. All right, so another argument, another argument is infants do not need to be baptized for forgiveness because they are innocent of sin. Now this comes about, this comes about again, really contrary to the clear word of Scripture, um, because if you get this idea that babies don't need to be baptized, 
Well, now you have to come up with a reason why they don't need to be baptized. Well, they don't need to be baptized because they're innocent of sin. And now what are you doing? Human reason is making up something that's not in Scripture in order to support your point. So if you say that babies don't need to be baptized, you have to answer the question, why don't babies need to be baptized? Oh, well, babies don't need to be baptized, um, I don't know, maybe because they're innocent of sin until they're about 12 years old. Well, show me where it says that in the Bible. Right? It's always a good answer. Show me where that says that in the Bible. Well, they can't show you where that says that in the Bible. But that's people are letting human reason to try to explain, trying to explain what they want to believe, contrary to the clear word of Scripture. They're trying to explain what they want to believe, contrary to the clear word of Scripture, and so human reason is coming up with other reasons other than what Scripture says. So... Infants do not need to be baptized for forgiveness because they're innocent of sin. Well, what does John 3, 6 say? That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. So that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit, which means that every child you ever have, Harrison, is... 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 Yes! That's exactly right. You were, again, you were right, right, and just oh so wrong, right? But, uh, uh, right, uh, that which is born of flesh, the sinful flesh, is sinful flesh. So every child you ever have is sinful. So what would we put there? Children are born? Sinful. sinful. So to say children are innocent of sin, well, okay, maybe they could be innocent of sin. But let's establish this first. Children are born sinful. Now, if they're innocent of sin, that's another question. But they are born sinful, okay? Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All right, all have sinned. That would include children. All right, again, children are sinful. Romans 7, uh, 14 to 25, that's a long haul. All right, read some of it. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am on the, of the flesh, sold under sin. But I do not... All right, so the law is spiritual. The law is a good thing because it's the Word of God, but I am flesh, right? So I'm sinful. Keep going. For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, uh, what I want, but I do the, everything I, uh, I hate. I right, so I don't do what I want, right? I mean, I know I should be nice, but I'm not nice, right? I do, I do the sinful things that I don't want to do, and I don't do the good things that I want to do, because I am sinful. That's what that's the long and short of what Paul is saying in this passage. So again, uh, the flesh is sinful. The flesh is sinful. Ephesians two one to three. <gasps> she left. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. Psalm 51, verse 5. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Alright, so you are sinful from conception. Sinful from conception, right? You're brought forth in iniquity. Iniquity is fancy word for sin. And you are conceived in sin. Right, so you're sinful from conception. And Ephesians 2, 1 to 30. And you were dead in the and you were dead in the trespasses and sins, in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work of the sons of disobedience, 
among whom we all lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. We were, and were made nature, and, made, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. All right. So you are dead in your sin, children of wrath. Right? Dead in sin, children of wrath. That's letter D. Dead in sin, children of wrath. Now, what was the argument again? Infants don't need to be baptized for forgiveness because they are innocent of sin. Do any of those passages say that kids are not innocent of sin? No. None of them actually say that children are not innocent of sin. So children could still be innocent of sin. I mean, as the argument goes, right? So if, uh, if you had somebody who was saying, look, children are innocent of sin, and you say, ah, but all people are born sinful, they would say, yep, children are born sinful, they're just innocent of sin. Right? What is, what is the answer here that's actually not addressed by Scripture either way? Well, I take that back. I should add a passage or two. Hmm. Scripture tells us that all, uh, all people stand guilty before God. That's actually a better passage for this argument, isn't it? Because then you can't say that children are not innocent of sin. If all people stand guilty before God, then children are not innocent of sin. The Bible never says that children are innocent of... <laughs> don't ask why. I mean, you don't even have like a point on this anymore. 